Hello, people. <laughs> Whoever started that clap, that was innovative. That was good. All right, as I said, this is the first time I've talked publicly about Dunwallow. So first, I'm going to try not to talk only about Dunwallow, but also uh, just bear with me if, if I lose track of times. So, um, going to try to do three different things, um, a brief sort of overview about Dunwallow context. Um, Next is, uh, I was asked to talk about mobile, so talk about particular space I'm excited about in mobile. Um, and then lastly, share a couple insights thus far uh, re regarding mobile that we're seeing at Dunwallow. Um, so, you know, the background, um, I was really maniacal about doing something I was super passionate about. And has anybody seen the TED talk by Simon Sinek about why I love that talk? It's worth 20 minutes if you have never seen it. Um, but an advisor of mine, he's amazing. His name's Dar Dr. Uh, Mark Guadagnoli. He built a lot of the culture onboarding stuff at Zappos. He's a phenomenal guy. Um, encouraged me when I was thinking about what to do next to watch that video. And um, without thinking, just write whatever I believed. And this is actually what I wrote. And I took a photo of it at the time. Um, so I spent a bunch of time thinking from the whole life cycle of employees, um, sort of uh, you know, hiring to retiring, what really makes people happy and productive at work. Um, which led to starting Dunwello. The short on Dunwello, like I said before, was I had started this company, Jamvara, you know, where that raised, I raised over $50 million. We grew really fast. You know, the company's still going. Um, I'm the chairman of the board there, uh, but I also was definitely not the right person to keep running that business. Um, but I have sort of assembled this team of people that come from, you know, well, from success factors through Global Force uh, to Mark, who I mentioned before to really figure out, can we build something here that can meaningfully impact lots and lots of people and their happiness and productivity at work? Um, the opportunity in mobile, you know, when I think about like, why is it that people are so disengaged? And I felt like I didn't need to convince people in this room that people are disengaged at work. Is that a fair assumption? All right. Um, you know, what I found is I like tried to talk to hundreds of people, all walks of life, all different types of companies, all different types of roles, and say, why is it most of them pointed back to uh, the, the, the feedback and recognition process that was in place? And if you can read this, like, this I, I just love this cartoon. Um, go. Uh, and and it, it, it's, it's pretty crazy if you think about it. Like, even if it's well-intentioned where a manager wants to give great feedback um, at the time of the review, you know, chances are you know, they're going to spend a day or two days coming through email and text and and chat and increasing like all these other systems, trying to come up with examples to give that great feedback. And it's also obviously not timely, which is really not motivating. Um, but there's another dynamic like on the other side that I think is really important to think about, and it's really, really key to mobile, um, because so much of it's happening in mobile, which is I think it's important to think about you know, this world where we have, and, and context is really important, these IV drips of information coming at us, where um, you know, Obviously, it says Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, but there's many more. But you've got these different circles of your life where you, know, you see those vacation photos or you see you know, what's happening with your niece or your nephew, and it makes you feel connected to your friends and family, for instance. Um, or you, know, you see that promotion that somebody got, and you're seeing that on LinkedIn, and it's connected to your, sort of your public professional network. Um, or whatever knowledge is important to you, you have Twitter to sort of get that constant flow. But, what I think is really interesting and intriguing, and I actually think Yammer um, proved that this void was there, uh, but then in many ways, I think, became the MySpace of this circle, um, that there's this, there's this circle <laughs> of moments that are happening more and more every single day that contextually don't make sense to share or consume in these other places. So maybe because they're confidential, uh, maybe because they're socially awkward, uh, maybe because you, know, you don't want to ask for feedback or initiate a tough discussion via Facebook message. Although I will say, an important dynamic to recognize is that more and more, I, I think people who have grown up with phones in their hand um, see text message, see messaging, see these things as a way to initiate tough discussions face to face, which I think somebody brought up earlier. It's a really, really interesting insight. Um, so the, the other piece I wanted to bring up was like when you think about the landscape of communication at work, this is how I think about it, which is you know, this axis being how structured is this information as it pertains to being useful for feedback, coaching, recognition, development, whatever. Um, and this axis being how frequent 
is, is that communication happening? And I think that what we're seeing by and large is that these systems continue to be very, very important. Right? You need them for the end of the year assessments or decisions around budgeting, um, or you need it for legal uh, uh, reasons. But we're actually seeing more and more communication happening over here. And this list is getting longer and longer, especially as it is easier and easier for people to bring tools in grassroots, very consumerized, uh, that are allowing them to do messaging or collaboration in whatever the newest, hippest way is. Uh, and where I think that there's a really, really interesting opportunity is sitting in between these things. Because as more and more communication is moving over here, what I think is happening is more and more of it is getting lost. You know, it sort of just happens and it's gone. Um, and you know, frankly, that's what we're thinking a lot about at Dunwello is it's one thing, uh, and we think valuable, to facilitate sort of that community where people can recognize and exchange feedback real time. But we think the real value is over time is actually preserving the information or the important information uh, in ways that can be actionable for both the individual and the company. Um, so that was high level just where I think there's interesting opportunity in mobile. Obviously, there's many more things. Um, a couple of specific insights from Dunwello on mobile. The first is, um, you know, and everybody talks about you've got this phone in your pocket and immediacy and real time and unlocks a lot of you know, opportunity there. I actually think that there's another layer to that, which is pretty valuable, which I would call quasi-immediacy, which is, especially when you think about calendar integration, uh, the ability to prompt somebody at the end of the day to do something that otherwise they probably would have forgotten to do. And think about feedback, for instance. You know, I think a lot of times, like we've been trained where feedback is something that you sit down on the weekend and you write a paragraph about and it's really well thought out and I'm going to deliver it in this special way with this magical cookie. And um, as a result, it never gets delivered. Uh, but if we can help people remember, oh yeah, that's right, I want to make sure I talk to so-and-so about this, there's a lot of interesting opportunity there, especially integrating with, with calendars. The next one is uh, short form um, habits and character constraints for us lead to much higher adoption and usage um, and sort of conversion of getting people to give each other feedback. And the reason is, like, how many people have ever had the experience of somebody who um, is like super slow to reply to email but will instant reply to text? That's it, I would think more, but okay. Um, the reason, I think, is that there's this unspoken, unwritten rule that we both know that it's a text message. We both know it's a direct message. We both know it's whatever. It's this character constrained thing where I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just going to send it. And you know, one of the things about Dunwella when you, will, when you see it is that every, every piece of communication, every mode of communication is character constrained. And that was by design, um, not because it was cool that Twitter's doing it, but because it helps, um, we think, and what we're seeing uh, people be much more likely to, in that moment, deliver the feedback or at least initiate the conversation uh, rather than want to be able to think it out and then therefore never do it. Uh, and then the last piece is, you know, I think photos are a gateway to some really magical stuff, uh, including you know, the, the power of what, how good it feels when you post that moment and you're thinking about that moment, you're celebrating a moment together. Um, but even more powerful is there's something about photos uh, that when you look back, I think can help you relive a memory that otherwise you may have forgotten about. And you know, Dunwello is very, very photocentric. Um, and it's by design once again. And what we see is that people are much more likely to go through the process and post here relative to somewhere else because it feels good to do so. Uh, but we also believe that in the long run, um, I don't know if people have seen the Facebook look back uh, functionality where you can like play this video. It's pretty neat. It takes all the photos from your life and puts it against uh, this little song. And you can argue it's cheesy. But almost everybody has a moment where you look at it and you say, for me, it was my brother's wedding. Like, wow, I hadn't thought about that for a while. I haven't talked to my brother in like a month. I need to reach out to him. That was a really cool experience. But one of the other things that's interesting is if you look at your Facebook look back video, my guess is most people will not have a single at work moment. And if you do, maybe a couple. And I think that's a big piece of that contextual opportunity where it's just simply not appropriate to post or share most of the little things that are happening every day there or on Twitter or on LinkedIn. And I think you know, structuring a place where that can happen is pretty interesting. That's all I got. Yeah. 
Um, I'm hyperactive on Twitter, so if anyone wants to get in touch, you can tweet. Anyone. Um, but thank you. I've learned a lot from you all today. Oh. Thank you. Oh. What's the incentive for a colleague to uh, endorse someone else on, on Vanilla? Yeah, so the question was what's the incentive for um, somebody to em endorse a coworker? Um, I think that there's this pay it forward, we're all in it together nature. Uh, about it where people feel compelled to sort of band together and we're all going to win together. But I would also say, especially for people that have grown up curating their profile, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever else, they understand that if I pat your back, you'll pat mine. Um, and there are some dynamics there that are real. And I view our job is to actually police against too much of that happening to maintain the meaningfulness rather than just attaboys happening all day long. Yeah. So do you feel like what's missing from the feedback is the constructive criticism or the, or the positive feedback that people sort of forget to give each other? What? Yeah, I think that I don't believe that feedback and recognition, the way that we think about feedback and recognition, is relevant anymore. And I think that um, when you think about how we're feeling connected and we're getting feedback and recognition in the other parts of our lives. It's very different than three things I'm doing well and three things I'm not doing well. Um, and what we want to make sure is that whether it's positive or negative, that that feedback is happening and it's happening constantly. Um, and that we're structuring it along the way so it can still fit and work with the systems that all of your companies have uh, because we think those are important too. Yeah, so um, we're experimenting with some things such as we don't let you go back more than three days, so you can't doctor in retrospect. And we're also limiting how many times you can mm -hmm. give your stamp of approval. Um, we actually have your face show up on that moment to try to make it more meaningful. Um, but we think that that's a really important functionality because I think one of the evolving forms of critical feedback that is happening is that the absence of a like or the absence of a favorite is a really strong negative signal. Um, so we're trying to design in such a way where that can actually be a tool for management teams, which is a much longer conversation than this. But um, it's a really important question. Brett, thank you. That's Thanks. very valuable information.